So usually I would be doing school visits around this time, um, but I'm not, obviously, because, you know. Um, so I thought I'd do some, some tutorials, some drawing tutorials. Uh, I spend a lot of my days drawing Pokemon as part of my job, and it's, it's a lot of fun, and I've never actually been more grateful for it. It's... It's great um, just sitting at home drawing Pokemon and uh, I thought maybe you guys might want to give that a go too. So here is a little tutorial in drawing a few simple Pokemon um, and then I'm going to set you a little challenge at the end to see if you feel like doing that. The good thing about drawing Pokemon is that we're able to draw them based on quite simple shapes. We're going to be using a lot of circles and, and oblongs and squares, rectangles, things like that. The idea with these circles is that really when we look at the Pokemon, most of them are, are based around spheres and simple spherical shapes. So when we start to add lines like this, we're trying to give an indication of that uh, depth and that spherical shape. And also these lines help us to, to see where the eyes might go. Um, where the mouth might go. And the great thing is such simple shapes can be really expressive. So what we want to be able to do is to create these expressive characters so you can draw them again and again and eventually put them into your own story, which I think would be awesome. Um, so here we go. We're going to start with Cleffa. You can see Cleffa quite clearly here is built around a circular shape here. It's slightly off it's a slightly different circle it's slightly more triangle we've got some more triangular shapes going on that you'll that's something that you'll find with a lot of the pokemon that shapes are repeated over and over again within that character design uh, and that's something that you see in a lot of character designs anyway so here we go with cleffa you'll see that cleffa i'll start with a rough circle like that it's you can see it's a little bit thinner at the top here a little bit more bulging around here so you've got this nearly slightly triangular looking circle. Uh, we're going to add a couple of triangles to the bottom here. See how that line curves down? Just carry it on and give give Cleffer another foot there. Um, and what I was talking about before with the lines going across the face. So you've got a line roughly where the eyes are. That's where you want to put the lines. Always when you're drawing face, you'll separate separate it usually into two halves. The line usually, if you're just drawing a normal human face, the eyes go about halfway across the face. Here, it's pretty similar actually. You know, the eyes are about halfway from the top to the bottom. Um, in this shape, it's probably just a little bit, a little bit higher up. So you've got the eyes there about 60% of the way up the face. And then another line, which is going to represent the center of uh, Cleffa's face. So this line is going to be aiming to go between the two eyes there. So we're going to put it through like that. And that would place the eye here and here. And you'll notice actually these dif distances are slightly different because the way that perspective works on the sphere, uh, this distance gets a little bit shorter as it moves away from from the eye. Um, so we're going to add a couple more triangles, add some tri add a sort of a triangle up here. And let's see how look how that line goes across. I haven't quite got quite haven't quite got that right actually. That there we go, this triangle goes across there. Another triangle across there. And even this shape on the top of their head here. It's, it's again a sort of a cross between a circle and a triangle. It's, it's again reflecting that overall shape of Cleffa. Uh, and then we'll add a little circle on the back there. I think that's their tail. Uh, similarly, Cleffa's hands are sort of oblong circular shape and a little smile there, which is probably most important, and the little cheeks that add detail. So what I've done here is I've, I've created a base for the drawing. Uh, I've done it in blue. Unfortunately, I'm having to do this digitally. Uh, sorry, I can't do it with uh, you know pens and paper and pa pencils as you're probably doing. Um, if you've got a pencil and a piece of paper, what you should start off with then is creating this outline shape first in pencil so that you're able to rub it away later. And then on top of that, you can switch to a, a Barro or a black ink pen or something to go over this shape. So now we're going to draw around the outlines. Uh, 
a little tip that I quite like is often the outside lines of a character. If you make them a little bit darker, a little bit thicker than the other lines, then the character shape stands out a little bit more. I didn't quite get that line quite right. So you want to get that line, as you can see, you want to get it bulging at the bottom here. Um, obviously, that's one of the benefits of doing it digitally, that I get to press undo. If you've got an iPad or whatever, you can be drawing it on the iPad as well. That's a great way to start and to practice. Uh, and here we have the cute little eyes of Cleffa. And the mouth has a little kink in it like that. Um, and here are the hands and the circle on the back. So if I get rid of the layer beneath, you start to see what Cleffa looks like. You can see the bits that I've done wrong. It's not quite right. This eyes are little, these eyes are a little bit bigger. These shapes aren't quite the same size. But the idea is that um, we're able to repeat this over and over. So let's just, I'm going to try drawing it again now, but try a little bit quicker. And what we want to be able to do is create just expressive characters that can quickly make a story out of. We want to see these characters starting to behave and to act. Now, they might not be, might not look perfect every time. What I do is a lot of storyboards. So the idea is that the drawings don't need to look perfect, but you're trying to tell a story. Uh, what we might have here is Cleffa looking a little bit excited to see another Cleffa directly above her. There we go. Um, let's add, let's now put the black outlines on. Now again, as I say, these don't need to be perfect. What I always think is most important is just getting those quick expressive lines down and then we can add details or make anything perfect later. Oh look, they're missing a hand. There we go. Um, so there we go. We've got a bit of, and we've got some, we've got some cleffers. Right, so another one of my favorites is Psyduck. Now Psyduck, as you can see, is two circles. So let's have a look at the structure of Psyduck a little bit close, more closely. Um, starting with the blue pen again. So this is what you'd be doing with a pencil. Um, and the face here is more, it's not quite, it's like a squished circle, uh, like a squished tangerine or something. Uh, the line to go between the eyes goes just here. And we've got, you see, we'll do another line where the beak will go there. And it's a slight tilt, which makes side up look a little bit more anxious and worried and you can see as well so the overall body actually is 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 tilting it's a great i'll give you a line here to sort of show you what i mean so the body itself is tilting a little bit this way because his foot is up here and this foot's here so again so the character might not look perfect every time that i draw it but what we're trying to do is create these expressive characters that pokemon have done so well at designing um we're going to have one of the feet is going here, other one here, built out of a circle again like that. A beak will, uh, not the beak, the tail goes there. And you can see the rough beak shape here where it curves in. Now, I think Psyduck's eyes are often actually tilted a little bit like that, aren't they? Uh, this drawing shows them level, but some, when Psyduck's looking particularly anxious, they're slightly tilted. You've got the great little hairdo that Psyduck has. And again, we'll create the arms out of these sort of oblong circles. Little fingers. Have a look at how the fingers are reflected in the toes there. So you've got the similar shapes that are being used. Now, if we draw over that with a black pen, when you've got characters like this that are a little bit more 
uh, complex. There's a few more layers to them, a few more levels, like more appendages. You've got this. You've got uh, you know the arms and the, the feet and the legs. I always when I'm doing with the, when I'm drawing with the black pen, I always start with what's in the foreground first. So what's closest to you? Because you see this overall shape here. This isn't intersected by any other lines, whereas you have the face, which is intersected by other lines here. You see, and that's a little bit more difficult to draw. Um, so start with the shapes that are closest to you first. So I'd go this arm, this beak, like here. And then you can draw the face shape around that. Onto that, we'll put the eyes. I love it when I can just get the shape down in one motion, even if it's not quite right. It's better to get one smooth line that's expressive than a slightly wonky line that doesn't quite, that might look exactly the right shape, but it doesn't have the same kind of expression in it. So we'll take away the back layer, and there you've got a Psyduck. Uh, so then we can start drawing Psyduck in other ways. Now we know that how Psyduck is constructed. What can we? We'll have Psyduck looking at Psyduck, feeling completely freaked out at the fact that, that there is another him just above him, because obviously that is terrifying for any Psyduck to see. So here you've got, again, the shapes of Psyduck. This is the tail at the back here. You've got the head shape, the arm shape. Very Trying to make it very simply, the beak, which is made out of these circles. That's probably a little bit bigger. This time we're doing the beak open. And we're trying to get those eyes. So those eyes aren't quite level. We want to get that. We want to get those eyes lining up. The eyes are often the most important part. That's what people all look at. That's what people all focus on. That's what gives you so much of the expression. So you want to make sure that they're level. Um, and let's add some. You can probably see his other arm there. So now, starting again, we're going to draw what's closest to us first. So that's probably the beak. Uh, we have that there. So that's just the outline there. I can't remember what the inside of Psyduck's mouth looks like, probably something like that. You've got the eyes, yeah, that's not quite right, that's not right, you've got that there. I've obviously got the benefit of being able to press undo again here. Uh, you guys don't need to rush it quite as much as I am, I'm trying to draw very quickly. When doing storyboards, uh, you have to draw very quickly and the main point is to get the story across so that's what I'm trying to focus on with you guys here is to get the story across there you go you can see our second side duck there is a bit freaked out often the second drawing I've done a little bit better because I'm not thinking about it so much I'm drawing it quicker um, you'll find actually more and more more and more you practice the less you're able, you have to think about it less time you spend deliberating over every line actually the better that your drawing gets because it all becomes a lot more intuitive so there you go there we've got some we've got Psyduck all right so here we go now I really like this guy I don't know about you but um, I've got a soft spot for Gengar I think Gengar looks cool um, again you can see it is especially here it's just one big circle there and similarly you've got a lot of these shapes that are being reflected in in their character so let's get started you can see the circle here is slightly squished at the sides and the line to copy this image is coming down sort of at the middle. Um, there is a curve, so it's almost like he's looking up at us, um, which means that his face is pointing slightly down. So if I do the curve like this, 
and uh, his eyes are going to go just above that curve and the, you've got these semicircular eyes there now it's actually usually pretty good to draw the eyes first if possible because as I said earlier they are what define so much of the personality and it's what everyone's going to focus on it's what they're going to see straight away they're going to look at the eyes and it tells tells you so much about uh, the emotion that, that character's feeling and where they're looking, what they're doing, what they're going to do. So here, see, I've, I'm talking and drawing at the same time. It's not always the best combo. Here you have the tr triangles for the ears, whatever these things are, and this funky little hairdo, which I'm a bit jealous of, which I think is pretty cool. So these are all made out of these triangles here and this is where the oblongs come in I sort of talked about earlier so they're not quite circles they're made out of these rectangles that's what the hands are the feet however you can make out of circles because they are just sort of podgy little podgy little feet here you've got the triangles there for toes a little triangle for his tail and the triangles for toes here again. Right, so you, you can see it's for it's not uh, not quite right, but the goal here is, again is to draw quickly and get across that emotion, that expression of the character. Now, what I talked about before is is drawing the part of the character that is most in the foreground. So actually, here the foot, the leg here is coming towards you. That feels like the most important bit to draw because it's not going to be intersected. And what's also great about these Pokemon characters is this silhouette, how recognisable they were. If you if you were to see this character and you were to just see the outline, you would know that's Gengar. And I think the most important part of that is this head at the top. So I'm going to start with that. Get these small triangles here of that hairdo that I'm so jealous of and these big ears or whatever they are if anyone's got any suggestions as to what they are please let me know and here we'll draw around get the tail get that circle there for the foot get these oblongs in little triangles for the fingers as you can see I'm trying to draw quickly and not worrying too much about the placement and now I've got these eyes here so what I love about Gengar is is these fierce angry eyes but he's still kind of cute I sort of think look there you go bless him look Ah, oh, he's trying to be angry. He's trying to scare us, but he's just a big squidgy bull. Uh, there you go. And you got that nice big grin, him showing off his teeth. He's been to the dentist probably more frequently than I have. And there you go, sort of looks a bit like Gengar. Um, and now we've got, now we know how to construct Gengar. Let's move this one out of the way we can draw Gengar at another angle. So we know, let's, have, let's get that circle down here. Let's have them drawing, going across like that. So as you can start off with that oblong circle again, and then I get the eyes in, get those angry eyes going through here. So these need to be level. He maybe looks a little bit cross-eyed there. Do you notice that? So maybe you need the pupils. See, that's just something that you have to test and get right. You want the pupils to be obviously feel like they're looking in the same place. So if you're doing this in pencil, you can just rub that out, leave a little mark, take a step back, have a look again, and try and get that right. Get that grin there now 
what else? So we start with that circle. What else do we know about Gengar? We've got the triangles at the top for the ears. Now this one is more in the foreground. This one is in the background, so it's a little bit smaller. And a little triangle on top. And Gengar, when let's say they're flying towards someone, we've got the feet going to be pointing backwards a little bit with the toes just there. You've got sort of oblong stroke triangle here for the arm. Won't be able to see the other arm because it's on the other side of their face. If I go over that, oh, we want a black line. If we go over that, like that. See, now that's why it's better to start with the thing in the foreground because you can see how that line cuts through here. If I... Instead, start with that one. And actually, I should get this arm in first as well. And get that ear on as well. So then we can draw these connecting lines that make up the bulk of the face. And we can get these triangles in here to make up the hair. Let's get that smile on. I like that smile. Angry eyes. So there you go. Not worrying about it looking perfect or anything, but we can sort of recognize that Gengar. And you can put him into a story. So now that you can try and draw him in different shapes at different angles, you want to try and create stories with him. And that is going to be the challenge that I set you. All right, so there we go. Um, I've shown you how to draw a few Pokemon. We've got Cleffer, Psyduck, and Gengar. You can draw quite quickly, and you can draw from different angles and add some expressions to. As you can see, it doesn't matter that you get it just right. It's just about getting making some expressive characters and using the Pokemon as as a as a mold for that. What I'd love to see is if some of you guys can can create some stories, uh, create a little storyboard or a comic, or something that happens between these three characters. So here are some references I'll show you this is this is what I usually do so you can see some storyboards here that come up so yeah give that a go let me know if you want to forward me any stories or comics or anything that you create any drawings you can create I can put them on my Instagram uh, email me at hello at spacekidilk.com and um, I'll pick out some and share them around thank you for listening thanks for joining in